Hello, and you're very welcome to our CAO talk. My name is Michal, and I'm a Schools Liaison Officer here in IT Sligo. And today I am delighted to be joined by Donica O'Mahony, Career Guidance Counsellor, and of course, um, from Instagrams at Leaving Cert Guidance. And Donica today is going to talk to us all about the CAO and how you can choose a course that is right for you. So we leave lots of hints and tips. So I'll introduce you to Donica now. Donica, thank you so much for joining us. Michal, uh, thank you to IT Sligo for the invitation to come on here and chat to your potential uh, students. Thanks, Donica. That, that, that's brilliant. Thank you. Um, I know you're an absolute world of information, so I suppose we, we'll get straight into it and just let everyone know what we'll be covering in the next um, little bit is all about the CEO application. Um, as I say, really important to try and figure out what um, course you want to choose for yourself at the moment. Um, and what we plan on doing throughout the year is having Donica back. So today we'll be really just talking about the, getting the application um, started and the difference between the levels and so on. And we'll, we'll talk about all that. And as the year goes on, we'll go into more depth with the CEO. But for now, Donica, as I say, we, we'll, we'll start with the basics, I suppose. And what um, is the CEO? And I suppose, what, when did it open? Some of the important dates. Okay, so the CEO is the central application system here in Ireland. If you want to apply to any higher education institute, be it a university, a college, or an IT. Now, you don't apply for PLCs or anything else on the CEO. It's just higher education institutions. And it actually opened on the 5th of November. So it's just after opening up. Uh, and again, with the 5th of November, I would recommend to all students to go on and register with the CEO as soon as possible. You can register, it only takes a few minutes. Uh, you don't have to put your course, course, uh, course courses on just yet, uh, but if you register, that's a great start. Absolutely, Donica, and I suppose another thing is the sooner they register, um, 20 to January, of course, is a date that always sticks out in my head and 1st of February, So, and the prices to go along with that. So could you just tell them, Donica, yeah, exactly, um, the price, I suppose, which is always a big thing, and just get in, as you say, as soon as possible. Absolutely. So if you don't register uh, uh, until after the 20th of January, it's going to cost you €45. Euros. So that little window between the 20th of January and the 1st of February will cost you €45. Euro. If you register before the 20th of January, it's going to cost you €30. Euro. So that's really important to remember. Absolutely, Donica. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. If, if somebody's sure they're going to make an application, they might as well get it done sooner rather than later. Save that little bit of money. And as you say, they don't have to make their final decisions until next year. And just, I suppose, important maybe just to mention that now, Donica, I know we will go into more depth um, as the year goes on when we do these later in the year. But um, the fact that you, you don't have to make the decision, you, you did mention it, but um, just get the application in as opposed to putting down your definite decisions yet. Yeah, and of course, you've got restricted courses then as well, which have to be in by the 1st of February. I know IT Sligo have fine art. Uh, uh, is it fine art? Fine art, exactly, Donica, yeah. yeah. Fine art in, in their restricted courses there as well. So it's important that if you're going to apply for a restricted course, that you do so before the 1st of February. Even if you're not sure if you want to apply for the restricted course or not, you can put it onto your list for the 1st of February. And then when the change of mind facility opens back up between the 5th of May and 1st of July, you can decide then, you know, I'm actually going to take out that restricted course. I'm not going to keep it in. And so if you're not sure, I'd say put it in at the start. And then when you've really got your mind made up uh, by the 1st of July, you can take it out of your list then as well if you want. Brilliant, Donica. Thank you. Um, and I suppose a lot of people, this will be the first time probably seeing the CAO application and there will be encountering the level eight courses and the level six and seven courses. So what's the difference there, Donica? And um, of course, how many can they put down? OK, so you've got two lists on your CAO application. You can put down 10 level eight courses and you have option to put down 10 level six and level seven. So that's 20 courses altogether. Now, you don't have to put down 10 in level eight. You can put down 10 maybe in your level six and seven or the other way around. You can put down one in your level eight, you can put down 10 in your level six, seven, you can put down one or two courses and that's it. You don't have to fill up both lists. You don't have to even apply for both lists. You just have to apply for one list if you wish. Now, the difference between both is level six and seven. So level six, 
used to be called the higher certificate. That generally takes about two years. After that two years, you have a decision to make. You can leave college with an exit award, or you can decide to progress on for another year, for an additional year for your level seven. If after the level seven, you want to finish your college, you can and you can leave with an exit award, or you can decide maybe I'm going to go on and finish my level eight. So that's the difference between the level six, seven and the level eight. The level eight is it's full for the three, four years. And there's no exit awards. You have to commit to it. Where the level six and seven, you're only committing to two, maybe three years if you're doing the level seven. Generally, level six and seven also have lower entry requirements with regards to points as well. Yeah, ab absolutely. Done a very, very well explained there. And just on that um, order of preference is one, I suppose, good to get it into their heads already. I mean, that it is applying and I know the CAO uh, reiterate this again and again. And it's so, so important. Yeah, this is a huge thing. Genuine order of preference. You have to keep that in your mind when you're filling out your CEO. What do I really, really want as my number one? You know, what do I want as my number two? If I don't get my number two, am I happy to take my number three? Now, little tip I always give to students is put three of your dream courses down, number one, two, and three. So that's really important, your three dream courses. Forget about points. You've done your research and you really love these courses and you'd love to study them. The next five then, I would call them kind of realistic courses. This is the points I've got in my Christmas tests and my mocks. This is, I'm kind of in around this mark, so I'm going to put those five down. And then the final two, whether it's on your level six, seven or your level eight list, I'd always have them as backup courses. So if you're approximately getting 350 points, then your backup courses might be around the 200, 250 point mark. Uh, which is a really good. So your three dream courses, five realistic, and then your two backup as well. Genuine order of preference is important because if you get offered your third place on your list in the first round of CEO offers, you can't turn around and say, you know what? I actually prefer my fourth place. If you preferred your fourth place, it has to go in genuine order of preference on your list. That's what's really, really important. You can always go up a CAO list in subsequent rounds, but you can never go down. As soon as you get offered, say, your, your third option, level four down to 10 is gone off your list, can never be got again, but you can go up your list then in subsequent rounds. So genuine order of preference, really important. Yeah, as you say, as you say, Donica, it's so, so important that students uh, do that. And it's, it's really good to get that into the head at the moment and get that um, in the back of the head somewhere and, and start doing that. Um, you mentioned there, um, and I, I find it quite interesting, you're right, is um, the preference and maybe put uh, your backup courses and so on. And we will talk in a minute or two about um, researching course, courses. But, of course, many courses have alternative pathways, as, as we like to say. So just because you, you might have this... Um, dream course as you say back it up with maybe an alternative pathway there's, there's always ways into a career isn't there absolutely like we talked earlier about level six and seven progressions and like that it sligo do have those progressions you can start in level six go into your level seven go into your level eight you can even start in a level eight or sorry level seven and go into your level eight or you can even just go straight in uh, to your level eight degree there's also the qqi route or plc so students would often do a PLC for a year and then use their PLC grades to apply to these courses uh, through the CAO. So you could use your Leave Insert results and your PLC results, you'd be called a QQI applicant, to apply for the likes of IT Sligo and to get in in that route rather than your Leave Insert results. So it's a really good option if the Leave Insert is not going well, if you really want to progress on to college, but you don't think you're going to have the entry requirements, have a look at the local PLCs, see what course you think you'd like, and then have a look at the progression on IT Sligo's website or whatever college it is you're going to. Have a look at progression. What are they looking for? Do I have to get five distinctions in my PLC? Do I have to get six distinctions? Am I okay with two or three? So there's lots of different alternatives uh, for progression and particularly in institutes of technology where they offer the level sixes and sevens as well. Brilliant, Donica. And of course, when students are there, and, and the one that sticks out in my head a lot these times is physiotherapy. It's um, 
very, very popular. I, I think you, you probably know the stats better than me, but it, it did see a big increase, I think, nationwide last year and people looking to do physiotherapy. And within that, of course, the points are quite high. Um, and for every student, that might not be achievable. But there are ways that they can go on to do that. I know we offer ourselves, we offer our health and exercise science, for example, that leads is a level six to a year that leads on to physiotherapy. And there is, there, there is options to do that too. Absolutely. There's brilliant options. And I know Royal College of Surgeons take on level sevens for their pharmacy. Uh, whether you're doing something in science, you can do that. I know University of Ulster take on health and exercise science as well if they want to progress on to physiotherapy. Uh, so there's lots of different options. Whatever it is you really want to do, if there's a career you really want to do, there are pathways into it. Like you said yourself, Michal, you're talking 560 points, 565 for a level eight physiotherapy degree here in Ireland. Uh, so there's lots of opportunities to eventually get to that degree, whether it's doing a level six to seven, but progression routes are massive. There's so many in Ireland now. Uh, the world really is your oyster. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose it's been a, it's definitely been a strange year for um, the current six years or anyone else that is maybe applying to college, maybe be a, a PLC student or whatever. Um, but they have still time to research their courses as well, Donica. And would you have any hints and tips um, on how what they should be looking out for when they are looking at courses? And I, I know that like there's so many out there, but what should they be looking for? Well, you're, the key word you used there, Michal, was research. So research, research, research. Do as much as possible. There's so many virtual open days happening right now. And third level institutions are giving us so much access, whether that's to undergraduate students themselves, whether it's to lectures, you have so much opportunities to ask questions and ask the right questions. What exactly am I going to be studying? There's no point in doing a degree that has a lot of maths in it if that's not your strong point. So you have to research what exactly are the modules I'm going to be taking. Maybe you're really interested in doing a study abroad option. Does the course I want to do offer that? You're going to have to research the likes of accommodation. How much is that going to cost me? Do they have the clubs and societies that I really like? Because you want to enjoy your college experience. You want to meet those friends that have the mutual interests you have. So research, research, research. I know qualifax.ie is brilliant for uh, all that information. It has an excellent search engine. But the virtual open days are what I really encourage students to go out there, have your questions ready. You're going to get the likes of Hall and lectures and, and undergrad students that you're going to have the opportunity to ask questions. And it's really important that you do that. Yeah, br brilliant, Donica. And I suppose, I, I always feel myself, the common entry routes are a really good option for students too. So somebody maybe that's interested in science or engineering or computing, doesn't really know what area to specialize in and i know we offer them in the three i just mentioned there amongst others but yeah common entry routes and um, donica a wee bit on them please yeah i'm a big fan of common entry routes myself because it can be difficult for an 18 year old school leaver to know exactly what they want to do maybe the area they want to do which as you said Michal, maybe it's business that it slide offers computers, engineering, I know science is another undenominated one, that you might want to do science, but I love biology, I love physics, I love chemistry, I can't decide. Or for engineering, do I like electronical? Do I like mechanical? Am I a civil engineer? Where you've got these general degrees that are going to let you try them all out in the first year. And then in your second year, you start to dwindle down your modules. I really like this in first year. I'm going to kind of steer my focus over there. So you might have gone into engineering and think, God, I'd love to do civil engineering. But something about mechanical engineering caught your eye. And I'm really interested in that now. I'm a massive fan of undenominated general entry degrees to give students the opportunity to try out different things that they wouldn't have done even in secondary school because it's a big jump, it's a big transition from secondary to third level and you want to get that right. So a general entry degree can be a brilliant option. Yes, I think they're a fantastic option as well, Donica, totally with you on that. Um, and I suppose you kind of touched on it there a few, a few minutes ago, but the environment that a student's going to be studying in. So take us, for example, and um, it is more of a community environment. You're never going to be in a big class. Um, I know Jamie Brennan, some people that are into their GA will know who Jamie is from Donegal. But Jamie, for example, um, went to university. He's in a class with 300 people. 
um, he came to us and he's in a class with 30 and he said his personality um, just suited a smaller class much more. Um, so the environment is very important too, isn't it, Donica? Yeah, the environment is huge. I went to a small college myself and I loved it. You get to, to um, you know, kind of get to know everybody, and uh, which is great. And I, I think myself, I excelled in that. So you have to see as a student, what way are you going to excel? Are you going to excel in a smaller environment? Or maybe you like to be anonymous and you want to be part of a larger school or college community. And that's absolutely no problem at all as well. Some people do excel in that. And like I said, the clubs and societies can really help with the transition because you're meeting friends who've got the same interest in you. And what I like about IT Sligo is that it gives you so many more options with regards to the environment you're studying. I know IT Sligo are the leaders in online learning, you know, whether that's writing literature, uh, business, health and information science, you know, because it doesn't suit every student to go to a campus every day or they might have to stay at home for some reason, they might be sick, they might not be able to travel or they might not be able to stay away and that online learning. So even if that's something you're trying to consider, you know, does it suit me to have to uh, go to a third level institution every day? And if it doesn't, there are brilliant online opportunities in level eight, level six and seven that IT Sligo. And that's something you need to consider as well. Would that sort of environment suit me? And I know that mechatronic engineering, uh, the level seven that's, that's brand new next year to IT Sligo. I'm so impressed with that, where you've got the college experience, the online experience, the work experience as well. It's really brilliant. So if mechatronic engineering is something you're interested in, have a look at what IT Sligo have to offer in 2021. Brilliant, Donegal. Yeah, thanks for that. It's a really interesting and exciting new course that. So anyone that's interested in that, it's um, SG335, and you'll find that under engineering within our website. And just, just on environments too, Donica, of course, cost is, is hugely important to the individual, to, to families, to, to whoever it may be. Um, so they have to take that into consideration as well. Accommodation, of course, um, I, I know it's skyrocketed in parts of Ireland, um, but all, all these factors they need to consider as well. Absolutely, for students really, but there's probably parents looking at this as well, and it absolutely has to be considered because the, the chances are your parents are going to be somewhat financing you through this third level experience. So you have to take that into consideration. And, and the likes of IT Sligo and, and, and colleges and ITs like that over in the, the West and Northwest will have cheaper accommodation, will have better access to student accommodation. Um, and like that, a lot cheaper. Like I talked to Michal last March, Michal, and, and your your uh, rent, the price of it blew me away. And, and buses going to Aldi and stuff like that. And, you know, it was all brilliant. And, and I love that, how you're looking after your students uh, with all of that. And, and with that comes cost. And cost is massive. It has to be taken into consideration by both parents and students. And if it's a more affordable uh, experience you're looking for then you need to research that as well you have a great memory on you Donica yeah yeah so we first spoke a couple of months back and I remember talking about um, the accommodation and you're right so accommodation in Sligo starts from um, 56 euro and once again anyone that's watching this that wants to go onto the website there and have a, have a little look at our um, accommodation you, you will see that and some of it nowadays is, is akin to hotel rooms, I often think, with free Netflix and smart TVs. And it's not what not the type of accommodation I was in back in my day. I'm not going to say when that was, but uh, it's, definitely come, it's definitely come on a wee bit since that. And um, so it's a really fantastic accommodation there as well now. Um, Donica, just before we go, um, one last thing. Yeah, so we did mention the research in the courses, but it's important to talk to people too, isn't it? Um, and, and talk to your guidance counsellors, talk to the colleges, talk to your teachers, talk to your parents and start those discussions now rather than on the 30th of January, rather than late January before the application has to be in. Start those discussions now and talk to people. Exactly. So this is really the first time a student is going to pick their school. Up until now, parents picked your primary school and probably picked your secondary school as well. So this is the first time a student is going to pick where they go uh, for schooling, for third level. And you have to take that very seriously. If you were making a major purchase, 
you would maybe talk to people who've made that purchase. You'd maybe uh, look at the reviews, uh, talk to people who are selling it. If you were buying a car, you go and test drive it, like a virtual open day, or hopefully next year you can visit the campus maybe. So all of these things you have to consider. Number one, I suppose, is go to see your guidance counselor in school. That's the most important. But then there are brilliant websites um, where you can research all these courses. I know so many higher education institutes are very uh, uh, approachable if you have any questions or, or considerations. The likes of me all, school liaison officer, admissions officers, I know are very keen to get their students to their institution and whatever means that that takes, if that's, you know, taking a few minutes to answer your questions or whatever, research is key. I can't stress that enough. And talking to people who have been there, you know, take mom and dad's advice, take friends' advice, take other students' advice, your guidance counselor's advice, but ultimately at the end of the day, the decision of where you go and what you study will be yours. Yeah, and as you say, it's, it's really important to start those conversations now. And for anyone that maybe does want to get in touch with myself or one of our team members, um, you can get us through WhatsApp, through all your social media channels, through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever the case may be. It's, it's so much easier now is to get talking to people. Um, I said I was going to let you go on that question, Donica, but I still have one more. I, 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 I forgot a hugely, hugely important one. Um, and I know you attend, attended the CAO conference um, recently. And deferrals was such a concern for this year's uh, leave inserts, but it's not. It's, it's in fact, it's, it's improved in places, and it's, it's not as bad as 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 people might think. So, could you just give us a little bit on that, and maybe put people's uh, minds at ease? So, this was 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 the big thing I took away from the CEO conference. So, the CEO conference guidance counselors go and they talk to school liaison officers and admissions officers at all the third level institutions in Ireland. And one of the big questions from guidance counsellors was a concern that sixth years had. Is the competition going to be massive next year because so many students from 2020 decided to defer their place? I'm not going to college because of the COVID year. I want to get the proper experience. I'm going to defer for a year. And that was a big issue for students. And it was a question put to the admissions officers at the CEO conference. And the answer coming back was very positive. Every third level institution that was there said it's either the same as previous year deferrals or even slightly lower than previous years. Now that's a big relief for CEO applicants for 2021 that they're not going to have that massive competition from early deferrals. Now I know there's some leave insert sitting exams now 